making such a journey that is so long, it was not just physical pains we were actually going through a mental agony. My name is Arif Sahar. Uh, I was born in 1983 in the eastern province of Ghazni in Afghanistan. The whole province is made up of two larger ethnic groups, the Hazaras to which I belong and the Pashtuns. That was at the time that the Taliban had just entered the country. Everybody in my family and in the community was aware of the fact that when they took over, they would simply prosecute everybody on the ethno-religious grounds and differences. The numbers of people forcibly displaced by conflict is the highest since the end of the Second World War and there's no sign of it decreasing. We've seen over 50 million people affected and forcibly displaced from their homes because of conflict. There's probably about 150 million more that remain entrapped in conflict-affected areas. So there's a public health and a moral imperative to be addressing the health needs of these populations. So I found an opportunity to go to Pakistan to escape the Taliban and at the same time continue my education further there. In Pakistan, the situation was not different because the city had grown very insecure for the Hazara people, which continues today. Afghan refugees in Pakistan is a very old situation. And we have people who had been living here for two, two decades now. And what I could feel in these settlements and camps is that people had lost any hope to come back to Afghanistan, but as well any hope to restore a new life in Pakistan. We would most of the times travel and walk during the night times because everybody was scared of being caught by the authorities. Walking through mountains and villages during night times and in places where we have never been before, it's extremely difficult and scary. We were told by the brokers and traffickers that if we did not abide by their rules and regulations, chances were that we might get killed or shot by different people, even by the authorities and police. That's why we had to stick together. In many cases, they're undocumented migrants, fearful of being reported to the authorities. And so accessing care is extremely difficult. And so when they may have uh, injuries, non-communicable disease challenges, or indeed mental health, the ability to access care is extremely limited. If anybody fell, badly ill or was hurt for any reason or whatsoever, we had no opportunity to have access to uh, medicines or medical facilities. We have a problem with the movement and that's very new for us as well. So basically we have a population in movement that doesn't stop and they never stop and they don't want to stay in one country. When we reached Turkey, the border city, it was a kind of detention center. The landlord who was accommodating us would not allow us to go out because it was simply too scared uh, of being caught by the police authorities. It was there that every single body who was staying there fell badly ill. A serious high fever, sore throats, and then a kind of uh, endemic pain all over the body. All we had access to were painkillers that the people had actually got on them from Iran, from Pakistan. I had a friend of mine who is still in Greece and then he fell badly ill there. Uh, so we almost lost him. He had developed a serious breathing problem. Everybody thought it was a kind of TB. Uh, and uh, treating a person suffering TB in Turkey is extremely difficult and expensive. Right to health, that's a huge issue for us as well because they cross several countries and in each of these countries, there are different healthcare systems. And that's a huge issue for us as humanitarian organizations to make sure that in each of these countries, right to health is respected. Uh, from Cali to UK, it took us many attempts. Uh, so finally, a friend of mine together, myself, hid ourselves underneath a large track, which actually went into a train and then took us to the channel tunnel. And finally, we came out of here. And then there were many police officers and immigration officers waiting for different people who would come on a daily basis. So we were taken to the refugee center. Everybody was relieved and everybody was very happy. Come of the whole pressure that we have experienced throughout this long journey. But myself, I was still thinking about my future. I'm still feeling so sad and it hurts me when I think about my friend who left back in Turkey. He's still struggling there to build up a normal life for himself. If we don't treat those disorders promptly and effectively, 
we're really opening a Pandora's box of problems later on, not only for the individual and the suffering that that individual has, but also for their families and the societies in which they live because they're, they're no longer productive individuals, they're no longer fulfilling their true potential. I started going to college back in September 2003. I studied law and sociology for three years and then I did a master's at UCL. Returned back to Afghanistan and I was trying to help that community back. I did a lot of work there, I did for the World Bank, for the UNDP and for DFID as well. I really need to be in a position one day where I can make a lot of difference back there. For the first time, the general public and national governments are all well aware of the needs of these families and these individuals. Uh, when I think back about the days that I crossed all those dangerous places and borders, it makes me actually feel so bad because I say, why would the people take such dangerous journey? Why would the people put themselves in danger, in constant threats? That is why it is so important that we help them and then give them the opportunity so that they are established and integrated into the mainstream society where they can make a lot of contribution. They are people in need and I'm very pleased to see this wave of humanity and solidarity 